Hello and welcome back. This is Sherry with Heart and Soulful. I'm in the studio today with a sort of slow stitching Etsy uh, video. So if you are brand new to my channel, welcome. I do a variety of things. So um, most of my channel is my journaling projects, but I am learning slow stitching, which is also in a journal form. And that's what I'm gonna be talking about today. So if you enjoy this, please give me a thumbs up and feel free to leave comments, nice comments in the uh, I'm getting a lot of spam lately, so um, leave me a comment. And uh, also, if you want to receive notifications, hit the little bell, and then you'll get a notification when I do post a new video. So um, this one is kind of a random one, being slow stitching. So for all my slow stitching ladies, though, I wanted to share this because this month kind of threw me a little bit. And so I haven't even started, we're halfway through the month, more than halfway, and I'm just starting my April page. So what I am doing for those of you who don't know, I am brand new to slow stitching, which is kind of collaging um, with fabric and stitching it all together by hand. Everything's done, nothing's glued. Um, and you, you're you using a lot of embroidery stitches and that sort of thing too. Um, so I'm following along with Roxy Creations Journal of Stitchery 2022, and I'll put a link down below for the playlist in case you want to follow along. It's sisters Rachel and Sarah Roxburgh who are putting this together. They both do videos every Wednesday. There's an Instagram and a Facebook page that you can share your stuff on. And then lots of ladies who are participating also do their own videos on their own channels for their pages. So I usually just show one at the end, um, or at the beginning of a month for the previous month's page and I just kind of show what I did. But this month, because it threw me, I'm gonna do this other little video and then it's also in combination with something that's going into my Etsy shop. So I, the the prompts for this uh, for this month at the at the first of the first week of the month they both do a post where they start their page and they draw a word out for the background and for the focal point so for example March a background was recycled fabrics or old fabrics and so I used old shirt fabrics that were recycled from my husband's shirts I used to make aprons. And so I have all the, uh, the scraps that I didn't use. So I used those. And then Bright Butterfly was the focal point. So for April's page, the background is supposed to be vintage quilt. And then the uh, focal point, country cottage. So my problem was because I'm new to slow stitching, I don't have all those materials. I don't have old fabrics. And that I have some, but I didn't have any quilt thing that I wanted to use. Um, and so I, I thought, well... I need a plan B and I did have some old quilts that are family heirloom quilts that I don't want to cut up and I had one that I thought the colors of it would work so I texted my sister to see if she might have something in her sewing room and she had the idea since she's seen me um, uh, print fabric on print my own fabric uh, that maybe I take a photo of the quilt that I liked and then just print it on fabric and make my own kind of quilted fabric. So that's what I did, and I'm sharing this because I, I noticed on our Facebook page there were a lot of ladies that didn't have old quilts or the right kind of materials for this month. So they all came up with different things to do in, in place of um, you know going to a thrift store and finding a quilted pillow sham or something like that. Um, and then I think Rachel didn't even use quilt a quilt for her background she ended up using something else because she liked it better and then used quilt fabric for the pieces in her cottage so I went ahead and I took a photo of the quilt a section that I thought would look good next to my March page and then I just folded the fat the picture to where I thought you know to make sure I had exactly how I wanted it to sit and then printed it out and then I actually put another layer of backing so it would be a little bit thicker and then just drew with the pen on the back uh, the, because that's going to be hidden. Uh, quilt pattern. First, I stitched it, you can see, um, just basting it onto the um, with a hidden stitch so that it wouldn't move around and I could actually get it quilted. And then I just hand quilted it um, so that it would be like my old quilt. And it, it's okay. I mean, I'm not wild, wild about it because... I think if I would have maybe washed my the fabric a bunch of times before, then I would have felt like it was really like old. And I know on camera it's probably fine. This is an actual old quilt, 
and it actually looks pretty good on camera. Um, but it was just kind of bugging me because it wasn't really what I wanted. And I how dark the colors and all the all the designs in this quilt are that dark. Um, they're all kind of a little bit bold like this side, which is a good balance, but I have to put a country cottage on this now and it's not gonna, I thought it would just disappear in there. So I, I went ahead and I went into town to the antique store. I went to thrift stores, didn't find anything. And then I went to an antique store and I found the perfect quilt because in my mind, I had this vision of more muted colors and the creamy background and just, you know, colorful, but not dark colors. And so I found the perfect quilt. I didn't really want to buy a whole quilt, you know, and then I still need other little fabrics and things. So I went ahead and did it and I thought, I'm just going to go ahead and buy it. And I bought it actually a second one. Um, and then I will just cut them up because I'm not emotionally attached to them. I'll cut them up and then I'll just share them on my Etsy shop. So I put together a little bundle. Um, part of the thing too was, you know, you go to buy this stuff and it's, you don't want to, you don't need a lot for slow stitching projects. You just need little bits. And so I thought maybe I can put together a variety of things that would be a nice little bundle for vintage quilt slow stitching things. So I'm also including more than just this fabric and I'm going to go through and show you what you'll get if you order a pack. And I'm not sure how many packages I'll get together, but, um, I'm going to put a few on there right now. So, um, this is what will come in the mail, a nice little padded envelope. And then inside, you're gonna get this cute little bundle in your cellophane package. I won't take this one out. I'm gonna show you another another one since I've cut all the, the pieces already. So they're all gonna be a little bit different because it's a quilt, you know, and, and each square is a little bit different. This particular quilt that I got that's already quilted um, is in the Dresden plate pattern and Every single square of this has um, torn pieces in the fabric, um, which I really like because I wanted it to have a vintage look, like it had been worn, had been lovingly used, and I just, it, it was the cut, everything about it was just what I had in my mind. So I, each, each square, you'll get one square of the quilt, and those are about between 14 and 15 inch square. And so, like I said, they're gonna all be a little bit different. This one still has a little torn bits and some darker color too. But then I really loved how pastel all this side is. And like I said, you're gonna just be using tiny part, tiny bits. So that's another one. So you'll be getting one of those. And then um, this was just a quilt top that hadn't been finished. And there are some stains and damage, you know, to them. I'm going to try to pick out the best ones. But the reason that I grabbed this quilt is it was different. I love the vintage fabrics. This, this is an applique butterfly on each one. But the reason I really loved it was each square has this hand embroidered part on it too. And so I just, I love that. So I've already actually taken some and cut this out because you can use these little bits in your slow stitching. And then just even have this fabric. You could, you know, fold this butterfly in half and have them be half on a front cover of a book and half on a back cover, or, you know, put them onto um, a bag, like your stitching bag. I carry my stuff in, that sort of thing. I may make one of those. Um, so anyway, you get a butterfly. They're all different again. And even the little the little flowers and the style of the flowers are all different. But they all have a black body and then just different color. I love this flower. So you'll get one of those. And those measure about 11 inches if you don't count this green part. So 11 inches. And then this was the other quilt top that I had that was from uh, my husband's side of the family. But, you know, I don't have all these old fabrics and I just, some of them are just perfect for things, you know, cutting out little circles and that sort of thing. Um, little bits to make um, yo-yos or um, Suffolk puffs. So I thought um, I'll put one of these in and this is again is about 15 inch square. So you'll get one of these pieces. And again, they're all different. And then a couple of other little goodies that I'm going to add. So it'll kind of come to you this way. So you'll get the, the three squares. Yep. 
in your bundle. And then I'm gonna add a piece of, this is about 15, 15 or 16 inches of eyelet, and it's six inches wide. So I'm gonna add that. And it looked like it was probably had been, um, these are all old, and it had been um, ruffled onto something. And then a piece of, I really loved the border of the quilt too. So I'm adding, it's got this nice scallop on it. So I'm adding another 15 inches of this um, border from the quilt. And then I had some of this um, trim. This is about three inches wide. And again, about 15 or 16 inches long. That is just a, a nice pale blue. And these bundles will all have these these particular trims because I had enough. So I'll do as many as I can with these trims that I'm showing. Um, in the future, they may have lace or something else different once I run out of those. And then I'm gonna, I, I had pulled off, um, when I took the butterfly quilt apart, this started ripping off. This was what held them together. So I'm gonna take a piece of this. I haven't cut this one yet, but I wanted to make sure I had it long enough. So you'll get a, just a little scrap of that. And then I'm also going to tuck in just for fun. And I didn't put I didn't put these things. These are all in the description. So you you see the measurements and I'll have photos of all those. But then I'm also going to put a cute little piece of doily in there too, just for fun, another little embellishment. And then I clip a little um, a little thank you card on there with a cute little gold clothespin. So that's what you'll get. So, so they're all very similar, but you know, each square is going to be different. Um, so I'll be, be listing some of those as I have. And, you know, as I get more materials like this that I want to share, um, like I said, I'm not going to use it all myself. Um, I also, just at the end here, I have already listed a few. I, I haven't done a video, but I've listed some other fabrics and they have been selling. So I've been putting my scrim on uh, my Etsy shop. And the scrim that I have listed there now is not the same scrim that I use in my videos because I ran out and I have a new batch now. I have a tiny bit, but not enough to sell. Um, so I ordered some more and it, it's not exactly the same, but um, there's photos in there. And I think I mentioned in the description, in case you've ordered from me before, that you won't expect that it's exactly the same. I also had, this one's getting shipped out tomorrow actually, but I do have another piece. Um, of this one. So it, when I did decorative sewing, I was using, you know, really, this is like a faux suede, um, really luxurious fabrics um, and trims. Uh, this is just the simplest gimp, but it's, it's all, you know, decorator quality for upholstery. Um, so I've been kind of packaging them um, in my mind, going through my things and thinking what would be a nice journal cover. Um, that sort of thing. I mean, you can use it for whatever craft project, but that's when I'm cutting the sizes in that, that's what I'm thinking of. So I have sold one of these. I do have a couple more already packaged up of this really pretty um, jacquard brocade, um, kind of a chenille fabric, and then the gimp that coordinates. So these are all um, 28 by 27 and a half, these, and then two yards of gimp. So I'm trying to package them um, with making a couple of journal projects in mind. So check out my Etsy shop. There's all kinds of other things there too. Um, but for now, I'm going to get back to work on this. I need to figure out my little cottage um, for my slow stitching so I can get to work on that in the evenings. So have a great rest of your day. Now go make something. Bye.